When Westerners think of religion, whether it's Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and all the isms in the world, Westerners think that it's a personal issue. A Buddhist will go to the temple and peacefully worship whatever he does, meditates, contemplates. A Jew goes to a synagogue and does his mitzvah, his good deeds. Uh, a Muslim goes to the mosque, pays uh, zakat, uh, alms, or go to the pilgrim, al-hajj in Mecca. Or a Christian goes to church on Sunday. They think it's a personal issue. Reli that religion is a personal issue. So when they look at Islam, they compare Islam with the way they understand religions. And that's the first mistake. Islam is not a religion for personal use. Islam is Sharia law. Islam is a form of government to the world first, then to a personal application. It is not just how you pray or whether you pray towards Mecca. It's how you dress. You dress in Arab culture. You speak Arabic. You can't go to heaven unless you pray in Arabic. You can't read the Quran in English and expect to get good deeds to go to heaven. You read the Quran in Arabic. It becomes an imperialistic system that everybody now must speak Arabic, think Arabic, practice the religion in Arabic. It's a form of law, not just in how you eat, but how you get married, how you deal with your government, how you deal with your military, how you deal with the youth, how you deal with women, uh, every aspect of your life becomes Islam. Everything is Islam. The Jews brought to the Prophet a man and a woman from amongst them who had committed adultery. The Prophet ordered both of them to be stoned to death near the place of offering the funeral prayers beside the mosque. The Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old and she remained with him for nine years till his death. In no way is Islamic Sharia, Islamic government compatible with Western understandings of human rights and freedom of conscience. Traditional Islam forbids conversion from Islam, forbids anyone to leave Islam. There's no way out. And it forbids Muslims and non-Muslims to live as equals in society. It mandates the second-class status of non-Muslims, forbidding them to hold authority over Muslims, forbidding them to uh, hold certain jobs as a result. It even mandated in history that houses of worship of Jews and Christians were neither to be built or repaired, making the communities relegated to a perpetual state of decline. O you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as aliyah, friends, protectors, helpers. They are but aliyah to one another. And if any amongst you takes them as aliyah, then surely he is one of them. It is not possible for a non-Muslim living in a Muslim society to invoke his uh, civil rights and human rights uh, that would be independent or separate from the Sharia concept. He is expected to submit to Sharia willingly, and if he accepts his dimitude, the position of a dhimmi, uh, he will be a protected person. A protected person is uh, someone who is, in fact, a willing subordinate to the Muslim overlords. We saluted the Prophet as he stood praying, and he came out to us, and we told him that we had killed God's enemy. He spat upon our comrades' wounds, and both he and we returned to our families. Our attack upon God's enemy cast terror among the Jews, and there was no Jew in Medina who did not fear for his life. The Hadith very clearly says, the Hadith, which is what Muhammad said, I have been ordered to fight until Everyone says that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So this is how Islam spread to uh, North Africa. This is how is Islam spread all the way to Indonesia, 
This is how Islam spread in the Middle East. Syria was not a Muslim country. Lebanon was not Muslim. Uh, Saudi Arabia even was a mixed multitude. All throughout the Middle East, that's how Islam spread, it was by the sword. This is why you don't see any synagogues in Saudi Arabia. You don't see any churches in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Christianity uh, virtually is non-existent. Even in my village in Bethlehem, Muslims are taken over. Uh, there's only 20% left of the Christian population. In Lebanon, uh, Christian Lebanese are moving by the droves. Uh, Hezbollah there is very active. Lebanon used to be a Christian nation. Now, all of a sudden, it's being Islamized. So, Islam is moving. Muslims who come to the United States and come to Western Europe with an idea that Sharia is the law of Allah, they look upon our freedom of religion and they look upon the fact that non-Muslims are in power in the United States and in Western Europe making laws and making laws not on the basis of the law of Allah but on the basis of consensus and free elections. They look upon all that as a manifestation of jahiliya or unbelief, the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, as the times in any nation's history before it became Muslim is referred to, so that you have uh, Pakistan and Iran and so on, they refer to the period of their history before they became Muslim as the period of jahiliya. they also will consider the United States and Western Europe to be in periods of jahiliya today and many Muslims coming into the United States and Western Europe will work to establish Islamic states here on the basis of the idea that the secular state and the state based on elections has no legitimacy and you don't have elections about the law of Allah you simply obey what God says